What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 19th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in and that did very, very well today on the 19th of February. But before we do get into the video, guys, for everybody out there that enjoys the content, you find value in this content here on YouTube, feel free to hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow. And I appreciate you guys so much for doing so. And I challenge you, can we get this video to 60 likes? Let's see if we can do it, guys. Hit that like button down below and let's get started with today's video. So at the time that I'm recording this video, actually, we have about 10 minutes left in the market. We could see here, guys, you know, based off the SPX, you can see the Dow on the side here and the NASDAQ. You know, it does look like we're going to close the day green, but it wasn't too crazy of a green day today, guys. Literally, the SPX is up only six points right now, up around 0.23%. Nothing crazy there. The Dow Jones is up around 31 points right now, nearing at the close of the market, up around 0.12%. And the NASDAQ composite, guys, up around 12 points, up around 0.18%. And all of the three major indices that we talk about on this channel that comprise the U.S. market, you know, these are all at resistances. They all have this same thing in common, that they are all at a resistance from the beginning of December, right? We can see the NASDAQ here. We've been talking about these resistances, guys, but today, since we did have a decent green day, small, small green day, we got even closer to these resistances, right? The one here for the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, guys, it broke above it, but now we're nearing the other one at around 2620, uh, rather 26200. And the SPX, guys, we are right at that resistance at around 2785, 2790 from the beginning of December, uh, you know, of 2018. And in terms of the SPX, guys, and the major markets here, we've been talking about this channel that we've been trading in over these past couple of weeks and the past couple of videos, right? For those of you guys that have been paying attention to the channel, you guys have seen me talking about this particular channel here, you know, categorized by these red trend lines, right? We can see the support here, the resistance here, and the fact that we pushed up even further today, you know, up to highs of 2787, that's bringing us closer and closer to the resistance of this channel and to the resistance from the beginning of December at around 2790, guys. So in my personal opinion, you know, we can see the SPX here is over bought we slowed down today in terms of the uh you know the growth up only 0.23 percent so this could be the uh, you know the beginning of a slowdown and a slow pullback in terms of the spx and you can see it here guys we're moving even lower as the minutes and seconds tick on you know closer and closer to the market close so what to keep an eye on tomorrow guys you know, in terms of a technical basis here on the SPX, keep an eye whether or not we're going to break above this resistance and above this channel here, which is going to be a very bullish sign, very bullish move that we could potentially continue to push up. And if we do come to a trade war agreement, guys, by March 1st, this very well could happen. You know, this could pump more optimism into the market, ending up pushing it up even more, right? Even out of these, you know, two, even out of the second resistance, Distance potentially at around 2815. But, you know, let's say we don't get to a trade war agreement. We slowly start to see a resistance here, you know, at 2780, you know, 2775. We slowly start to pull back up or down rather. That could be a good sign that we're headed back down to the support of this channel where we would be potentially testing, in my opinion, you know, roughly 2740, 2745. That would be the support if we do extend this channel a bit, you know, that would be the target, in my opinion, to where the, uh, you know, SPX could potentially end up. And let's say we break below this, right, below the 50 SMA, which has been a support, and of course, the support of this channel, that could issue more downside to come in terms of the SPX. 
X, guys. So overall, you know, not much movement today in terms of the SPX. Again, like I've been talking about in all of these videos, just keep an eye on these resistance levels, guys. They're going to be very, very important. And of course, if we break this resistance and the next, we could be potentially testing all-time highs in the SPX, which is around 150, 160 points away from where we currently are right now. And for those of you guys that don't know how far we actually are, we're only about 5% away from all-time highs right now in the SPX. So it's not too far-fetched that we do end up testing these levels, but it is a decent amount uh, left to go in terms of percentage for us to even start to get into the $2,900 level. And of course, this trade war deadline line is going to play a huge role in my opinion in terms of where we're going to be headed for the SPX. So overall in terms of the SPX today guys nothing crazy. Let's take a look here at the Dow Jones. What's going on right now? Well we saw the previous break uh, I believe on Friday or Thursday we saw a break above this old resistance at around $25,750. We're currently trending up at around $25,900 so we're a clear 100 points above that resistance. So what we can say right now in terms of the Dow Jones guys especially since it broke this resistance is that this is a new support level for the Dow Jones and it's slowly starting to fill or trying to fill the gap from 25750 up to around $26,200 which would potentially be around a 2% gap fill if it does fill this spot right here. And how did I get this spot here guys? Well, we see the resistance here at around 26250 from where we ended up selling off back in November and of course in the beginning of December as well at around 25,750 to 25,800 opening up that gap that we do have signaled here by these trend lines saying you know this could be the uh, fill that we could potentially fill here in terms of the uh, you know Dow Jones and if we're judging on this closer term chart here the 20 day one hour let's take a look at the uh, 30 day 90 minute actually uh, a little bit closer here we can see see the trend that the channel that we've been trading in in terms of the Dow very similar to the SPX the support here the resistance and we are nearing the top of this channel here although we're not you know as far or as close to the top as we are in the SPX we are nearing the top here we are at the higher high uh, you know, portion of the pattern here, and we could potentially experience a pullback in the next day or so, you know, especially since we are overbought. Again, we are at the higher high pattern, meaning we could potentially be pulling back to the support of this channel, and of course, the 50 SMA, which is also a support as well. So in terms of the Dow Jones, guys, that's what I'm looking at, and with about two minutes left, it is looking like we are going to close flat, maybe even red in terms of the Dow if we do end up pushing down. And of course, we'll see this in a couple of minutes here and we'll come back to it and see where everything ended up closing. But in terms of the NASDAQ here today, guys, the NASDAQ composite, we are struggling to get above this resistance at around $7,100. We've been talking about this in the past couple of videos, guys, pretty much. The NASDAQ broke above 70.50. We held that as a new support. And now we're trying to fill the gap from 70.50 up to around 7,100. We're actually trading in between this old uh, resistance from about a couple of days ago, which is now a new support, and this old resistance from back in the beginning of December, which is still a resistance now. So I guess, you know, once we break out of this, if we do end up breaking out of this, the next spot we're going to end up, you know, aiming towards is around $7,200 in terms of the NASDAQ. And guys, just keep an eye on these, you know, keep an eye on these key technicals here, these resistance support levels on the major indices, because this is how you decide, or I personally decide rather, you know, what I'm going to be trading for that upcoming day or week, whether it be, you know, large caps, bear ETFs, you know, inverse ETFs, anything, you know, related to that. That is how I decide pretty much what I'm going to be trading. So there goes the market. Let's see, you know, the Dow ended up pumping up to about up 12 points here. NASDAQ closed at about up eight and the SPX up around 
$4. So very minimal gain today, guys, in the overall markets. So keep an eye on those resistance levels, guys. You know, nothing crazy today in terms of the markets. Now let's talk about what I ended up doing today in the overall stock market. So we saw a couple of ETFs and stocks today do very well that we actually talked about in yesterday's video. We saw Roku did very well. We talked about this one in yesterday's video. We saw what else did very well today. We saw um, what's that one? Uh, JNUG. We didn't talk about JNUG in yesterday's video, but JNUG did absolutely incredible today. We're going to be talking about this one a little bit deeper in a couple of minutes here, but this is a gold-based ETF. We can see it's up 13% today, meaning that gold probably did very, very well today as well, which obviously it did. We can see here, guys, gold went up 21 points today, up around 1.66%. We're going to talk about that in a little bit here. We saw a pretty decent day here today in terms of you guys up around 4%, up around a dollar and 16 cents. So now to talk a little bit about what I traded today, guys, no day trades out of me, but I added a swing trading position in Microsoft, which is actually one of the three stocks that I talked about in my video on Sunday, the three stocks I'm looking to swing trade in February video. Go check that video out if you haven't. In that video, I talked about Microsoft, I talked about Caterpillar, and I talked about Johnson & Johnson, which is another stock that I'm currently in as a swing trade. But in terms of Microsoft, guys, I added a small position, about 5-10% of my gold position today in Microsoft at around 107 80. This morning, I ended up adding that position, and let me explain to you guys why I ended up doing that. So if we can see here, guys, on the 20-day chart, you know, Microsoft has been pretty volatile, right? From 102 up to 107, the big pullback to 104, but overall, guys, it's been uptrending in price, right? And this morning, we got that little dip down to around 107.90, you know, 107.80, and I saw this as a good initial position due to it dipping down a bit and holding that, uh, what's it called, that previous resistance at around 107 as a new support level because we can see it bounced up from there very nicely, right? And in my video, I talked about how I wanted to enter Microsoft at that level at this previous resistance, if it was acting as a new support, which we did end up seeing that it did today, right at around 107.80, 107.75, we ended up bouncing there and pushing up. And that is where I ended up adding my initial position just because it went pretty accordingly to my plan. And of course, the fact that we saw it push up to 108.60 is a very good sign that it's continuing the uptrend and continuing to hold that old resistance as a new support. So as of right now, guys, I'm in with about 5-10% of my gold position and I plan on adding, <clears throat> excuse me, I plan on adding more money into Microsoft as we continue to uptrend and continue to push up with a goal sell with a goal first selling point at around 111, and if we break that level up to 114, that will be my second selling point. So right now, guys, I'm looking to grab about 3-4% of margin of profit on Microsoft, ticker symbol MSF. T and J and J guys is another one that I'm currently in. I did not end up adding more into this position. I do plan on adding more if we do slowly start to push back up into the $136 level. And if we break below this 135 old resistance, which is now a new support, I plan on cutting losses about 0.75% to 1% below this level. And if you guys don't recall, I'm in J&J around 135-ish, uh, 136. So literally the price we are right now, I'm not even up on my position at all. I'm not down on my position either, which is why I still feel comfortable holding this one overnight. The pattern has not broken. And honestly, it's still sticking according to my plan, you know, based off of these technicals that we do see here, guys. So ideally, I would love to sell J&J &J at around $140 from where I am in right now, guys, up to 140, that's going to be around a three to four percent profit. And of course, if I add more money as we go up, that profit is going to slim down a bit because I'm averaging up. But that's okay, guys, because 
averaging up in an uptrending stock is not a bad idea if you do want to ride the wave, if you do want to ride that upwards momentum and profit and build a big, big position, you know, in an uptrending stock, right? It might be a little bit riskier, you know, buying and averaging down on one of these stocks. Let's say if it does break the pattern, because at that point you're going against the trend. But if you're going with the trend, guys, profiting on the upside, adding more, um, you know, in a momentum uh, push up stock is not too bad of an idea in my personal opinion. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. I would love to know. I personally wish I ended up getting into JNUG because JNUG, like we saw a couple of minutes ago, went absolutely haywire today. So let's talk about that one very quickly. And uh, let's just see it, guys. JNUG is a bull ETF that trades based upon the gold futures. And whenever gold's going up in price, obviously JNUG is going up in price as well. So right now, guys, it's safe to say that JNUG is on an uptrend pattern, higher highs, higher lows, all that jazz that we like to see for an uptrend pattern. And this particular point here, guys, would have been an insanely good entry point if we got in at around 10, which it held that previous resistance at around $10 as a new support. We ended up popping up. Very, very good sign here in terms of JNUG. But obviously, if we aren't already in the stock or the ETF, rather, Chasing it right now would not be too good of idea, uh, an idea, which is why I want to see a pullback in JNUG. And if we do end up getting that pullback in the gold futures, guys, and in JNUG, this is going to open up a solid margin of profit. So if we look over here to the gold futures slash GC, we can see, guys, we ended up consolidating at around 1300, 1310, 1320 for a couple of days, and then we rocketed up all the way to 1340 today. So what I want to see in particular with the gold futures here is I want to see a pullback and a hold at about 1330, which is an old resistance as a new support level. If we do end up getting this pullback, I think this level right here for gold futures would open up a solid entry point back here in the bull ETF known as JNUG, which, like we said, did very, very well today. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of JNUG, guys. If I'm not, if you're not already in this, guys, I would personally uh, stay away. But if we do end up getting that pullback, that would be a good entry point, in my opinion, um, here in terms of JNUG. So another one I want to talk about today was Roku. We talked about Roku in yesterday's video. We are looking for Roku to fill the gap from $50 up to around $59. So the fact that we pushed up even further today, up 2%, that's a good sign that we're pushing up and continuing to fill that gap. But now for me to enter this stock, guys, as a swing trade, I want to see a bit of a pullback, maybe back to around $52. 52.50, so the RSI gets a little bit down, and we honestly just get a better deal in terms of how much margin we can make versus what we could potentially lose, right? Because if we get in here, you know, what we can lose is about four or five percent, and what we can gain is around six, seven percent, eight percent. So we would like to see, you know, our loss margin be, you know, maybe two, three percent, and our win margin be around 10, 11 percent. That opens up a better ratio, you know, in my opinion, for swing trading Roku. So Roku, guys, very, very solid, uh, you know, move today. Would love to see a pullback on that one before entering as a swing trade. Another one we talked about yesterday was STZ. This one did not break out of the resistance, had trouble again. We want to see it break out of this resistance to potentially fill the gap back up to 190. But until the until we get that break here, guys, I'm not going to be watching or looking to add money. Well, I'm going to be watching it. I'm not going to add money until we break that particular point there. And in terms of cat, guys, very similar to Roku. We're in the middle of this right now, in the middle of this channel. I would love to see a pullback in cat, you know, maybe back down to 134 ish 133 high 133s before getting in on that potential dip up to the upside back to around 138 for that nice little 
channel fill, gap fill right there. So another one that did very well today, guys. Well, not very, very well, but 4% is a pretty solid move for an ETF that's been getting hammered is UGAS, guys. And UGAS is a natural gas-based ETF. Whenever natural gas is going up, UGAS is going up. So let's take a look at what natural gas natural gas, excuse me, ended up doing today. We ended up seeing a nice break above that 50 SMA, I believe, yesterday here on this 180 chart. And we are seeing some nice reversal pattern. Um, you know, we are seeing a reversal pattern here in natural gas that could signal more upside, right? We see the double bottom here, which is a good sign for a reversal. We're seeing the break above the 50 and the 180 SMA. We're seeing the 50 SMA cross above the 180 SMA, which is another bull sign so there's a couple of bullish signs here for natural gas which is opening up my eyes for you guys over these next couple of days guys so keep an eye on this level of course if we break to 70 that's going to be a huge bullish move to the upside meaning you guys could have a crap ton of margin of profit over these next couple of weeks just keep an eye on that level guys and of course you know just set alerts Keep an eye on what the market's doing, and you'll be able to catch these moves that I'm talking about here, you know, in this video. But of course, don't trade any of these stocks based off of my opinion. You have to do your own research and understand each and every one of these patterns, stocks, ETFs for yourself before investing or trading rather these, you know, these stocks, these, you know, ETFs that we're talking about here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, drop a comment down below as well as subscribe if you're new here and you want to watch more content and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time that I do upload a video I'm uploading daily here on YouTube. And if you guys have any stock stocks ETFs that you want me to talk about leave those down below in the comment section as well I'll catch you all in the next video have a great night peace out